Welcome back to Teesside Autodrome. Race two is coming up straight away and the pole sitter is the man who set the fastest lap in race one. That's how they judge the grids of race two. It's fastest laps, not finishing positions. Marco Holt and Blake Wilson on the front row of the grid. Henry McCartney and Arnie Carr on the second, then Jensen Bishop and Annabelle McCarthy. Then it is Sid Marshall and Izzy Carter. Oliver Pitcher, P9. Wilson Dilks is once again the leading rider in the non-Ovale category in 11th position alongside is Tim Patterson with David Wilton, then John Pitcher and Rupert White. And Peter Hickman will have to start from the back of the grid alongside Michael Nealands, but he'll just have a huge laugh as he rides around. So the man on pole position, Marco Holt, carrying the same number as his namesake, Marco Simicelli. Off we go, charging up through to the first port of the corner, that is Paddock Bend. And it's a perfectly clean start as everybody gets through A-OK. -okay. No problems at all up to rib bend. Henry McCartney is not going to waste any time trying to get into the lead. Absolutely terrific as he already tries to make a bid for Blake Wilson's lead. Jensen Bishop working his way through into the top five, but it's Blake Wilson who leads the race from the front row of the grid. And yet again, Marco Holt finds himself down in third. This is exactly what happened in race one. So Blake Wilson leads the way from Henry McCartney with Marco Holt giving chase. But we've seen that script in race one. We already know how it ends. Is it going to be any different in race two? Yeah, Jensen spelt E-N-J rather than the more typical these days O-N of Jensen Button. And that is, of course, because he is named after the Jensen Interceptor, I am sure. The car that used to break down a lot, but when you broke down in it on the A1, you were standing alongside it, you still looked cool. <laughs> no, I, I reckon it was after Kid Jensen, the DJ, almost certainly one of the two of them anyway. Blake Wilson leads the way. Henry McCartney second, Marco Holt just biding his time, giving chase and in exactly the right position, just reading what his two rivals are doing and keeping himself in the hunt. Then it is Arnie Carr ahead of Jensen Bishop, Still there in P5, not a bad run so far from Annabelle McCarthy. Still keeping very static there in sixth position ahead of Marshall and Carter. Wilson Dilks and Peter Hickman are having a bit of a nice time of it as Wilson Dilks charges his way through. It looks like he's carrying an Isle of Man TT legend along for the ride. Absolutely, Izzy Carter, by the way, in eighth place. Many of you watching at home may know Izzy. She's got 100,000 of you following her uh, on her Instagram page. So uh, have a look, she's known as the Mini Rossi. I tell you what, it's not going to be that long until we see a female motorcycle racer at the top end of the grids in all categories. World Superbikes, Murdo GP, the Isle of Man TT. It's just a case of getting them through this process. They are coming very thick and fast. Plenty of great talents charging their way through these lower divisional categories. It will not be long until they're going to be household names in all the bike-loving households of the world. Here comes the move again from Henry McCartney. Through hairpin four, can't get it done. Through the dog leg, and still Blake Wilson holds firm in the lead of this race. Holding himself through to the D again. A little bit of curb, you don't want to use too much in these bikes because it will spit you off quickly. The Swindon lass, Annabelle McCarthy, still running very strongly there in the top six. Having a good run amongst the three leaders, though. The fastest rider is actually Marco Holt. He's a whisker of a couple of tenths quicker than the race leader. So again, Marco Holt is just biding his time. He knows how to do this from third position. You don't need to lead every lap. The only lap you need to lead is the last one. Yeah, he's been here before, hasn't he? Like race one, for example, he was in third for most of that. Starting this one in pole, of course. So drops back to third here, but he won't be happy with that. Just watching the likes of Wilton, the pitchers, John and Oliver and Rupert White going through. They're still having their own race. It's not just about the leading riders, of course. You've got to take into account that there are plenty of other riders in this race and they're still all working their magic. Pete Hickman's having a, br a brilliant charge through, just hustling Wilson Dilks and keeping with him all the way through. As Dilks goes through the field, so does Peter Hickman. And these two are going through the field like cats out of a wet paper bag. They're just charging their way through and doing an amazing job of it. Meanwhile, no change up front other than to say that Henry McCartney is still struggling to get past Blake Wilson and shake off Marco Holt. This is an absolute stalemate. It's an absolute stormer of a race like it was in race one. Here's the battle coming through. That looks like uh, Carr and Bishop. It is indeed. And it's not going to be too long before Dilks and Hickman are on the scene. They are absolutely tearing around this track. They're going nearly two seconds a lap quicker than anybody else around them except the three leaders and the three leaders actually Wilson McCartney and Holt were separated by a few hundredths of a second uh, apart from Marco Holt who was able to just get a little bit more purchase on the last lap 
Here are Carr and Bishop, and they are absolutely nothing between them. They were similar to each other to the lap time to the 100th of a second. There was only 100th between the two riders on that last lap. So either one of them makes a mistake now. It's the other that's going to pick up the benefit. Meanwhile, McCartney is all over Blake Wilson. Can he try again here? Hairpin three. He's going to have to come from a long way back, trying to get the inside line. Perfect positioning, though, from Blake Wilson. He knows exactly where to put that bike. Those of you watching might think, what's Peter Hickman, the Isle of Man TT record holder, doing in a race <laughs> with kids in it, with uh, kids as young as 12? Well, frankly, he's there to give some guidance. He's here this weekend as a great supporter of kids racing, and he wants to give them something to, to aim for. Basically, he's got a target on his back, and if you're wondering, well, why is he so much slower than these lads out front? Well, he has got a weight disadvantage. These lads are a lot smaller than him. They don't weigh as much. So Peter at a bit of a disadvantage, despite his great talents. Yeah, weight is everything in uh, bike racing, of course. You have to be quite even with each other in order to get the most out of the package. And it's very important to uh, take that into consideration. But yeah, absolutely. By giving himself a deliberate weight advantage, Peter Hickman's essentially saying to the kids, Come on, come and have a go. This is where you improve your race craft. This is what we're going to work towards as a team, as a unit. And it's great to see just how much support he gives. Right, this is Wilton versus Pitcher. Still having a very tidy race of their own further down the field. We've said this time and time again. It doesn't matter that you're not racing at the front of the field. You're going to get better and better as you progress. And you've got to win the battle that you're in because it will definitely help next time. Yeah, you've always got to come out on top of your little battle. And in championships like this, there's no club racing, of course. So uh, a lot of the difference between the riders will be inexperience. So a lot of inexperienced riders in amongst experienced riders. So the times can be significantly different. Wilson, McCartney, Holt still battling with each other for the victory. Less than half a second between the three riders up front. Dilks, Bishop, then Hickman and Arnie Carr. So Wilson Dilks has now worked his way to fourth position past Jensen Bishop. It's not going to be too long until Peter Hickman has a look. And they are still lapping rapidly quicker than the riders around them. Although Peter Hickman did have a bad lap that time around, probably dealing with traffic to try and work his way through. But Wilson, McCartney and Holt, nothing at all between the three riders. And they're still absolutely on an even keel at the moment. Trying to work through, that is Wilson Dilks having pushed the way through to fourth position, having an absolutely magnificent ride, considering he's not in the Ovali class either. He is in the open category and doing a fantastic job there on the 85 bike, working his way through. Here we go, back to the overall victory, and this is the last lap they're going into now. 1-11-10 from Henry McCartney, pulling out that little bit extra on Blake Wilson. Is he going to do the same move that Holt did on him in the previous race? He can't make it stick. So Blake Wilson holds on to the lead for the moment. This time, Marco Holt has left his killer moves, perhaps a little bit too late for the win, could still pull something out of the bag for second place. But Blake Wilson is adamant. This time, it's going to be me that takes the victory. Down the bob pipe straight, up towards Wiggles, and into the first of the two hairpins they will come. Through to the left-hander. Hold the inside line, Blake Wilson absolutely glued to the white lines, into the right, McCartney trying to go slow in, fast out, looking very smooth, but he catches a little bit of curb, that might unsettle the balance a little, through to South Bank, hold the throttle, be brave, try and keep a good balance, up towards hairpin three, is this going to be enough? Not quite, he has to wait for another opportunity, into hairpin four, can he can to the inside, he had a go, but he can't quite get there, oh, he's absolutely lost it, he manages to hold himself on the bike, but he's lost second place, Blake Wilson will get the victory, Marco Holt in second, Henry McCartney threw caution to the winds, let's see what happened, he almost gets a complete tank slapper, let's watch, he gets on the throttle, he's desperately trying to out accelerate, Blake Wilson, it goes wrong. He almost loses the position on the bike. And actually, so too nearly did Marco Holt in his surprise. So a fabulous victory then for Blake Wilson, who manages to hold off all the pressure from Henry McCartney. He'll be absolutely devastated. Not only does he lose the win, he has actually cost himself second place as well to Marco Holt. But Wilson Dilks in P4, Jensen Bishop in a solid P5, ahead of the Isle of Man TT legend Peter Hickman. Arnie Karp, Annabelle McCarthy, Tim Patterson and Sid Marshall rounding up the top 10 just in front of Izzy Carter.